What's up, y'all? We've saved the best for last, so let's jump right into it. And once again, gonna be having Shanks against Dark Knight and spawning in at the bottom right, the red Isengard player Shanks and his opponent in the top left, the blue Rohan player Dark Knight. All right, let's jump right into this one. The final game between Shanks and Dark Knight here. Let's jump right into Uruk Pit on the way. Lumber Mill as well. Double farm. Peasants moving across the battlefield now. Uh, both sides actually. One towards the top, one towards the bottom. I'm going to be capturing his farms right away. Uruks are also going to be going towards the top side to capture that Lumber Mill. There we have it. And we do have more Uruks on the way now. They will meet these peasants in combat, though. It's going to be a good catch here for Shanks. He's going to be able to take them out pretty nicely. But we do have Meri the Hobbit coming in soon enough to reinforce that area. We also have two more peasants on the way. These ones are going to be capturing the remaining farms and going to go towards the bottom side, it seems like. Urukai actually moving towards the middle side. They're trying to maybe try to, trying to find these guys, but they're going to be moving up towards the top side. So I'm not going to be able to scout them too easily. Mary actually performing quite well here against the Uruks. And these guys are searching for peasants. But the peasants did sneak towards the top side. Using the cheeky little pathway up there to sneak on by. A big war chant is going to be committed here. On top of Mary it seems like. Oh he wanted the cloak there but not going to be enough. The Urukai are very very quick. They will be able to potentially take him out here. He is trying to stop Micro though. Trying to stop and he will actually be successful there in cloaking the Hobbit. In the meantime, we do have these peasants moving across the bottom side. They did come through. And looks like these Urukai are going to be engaging two peasant battalions up here. Going to stop them from getting on top of this mill, which is going to be very nice there. The Urukai are moving on through. Will find a farm for themselves. These peasants are a little bit unopposed right now. They could deal some damage. But we have more Urukais on the way. Mary. Snuck his way through and going to be dealing some nice damage to those lumber mill workers. Going to be able to take them out all one by one. And these Urukais are actually devastating the peasants over at the top side. Uruks fighting the peasants over at that farm. Looks like this will be cleaned up. Uh, maybe getting a few lumber mill workers as well. But we do have yeah, Uruk Pit Furnace and we do have that stable on the way now. Two Rohirrims. On the way as well. Might actually save that farm just barely with those Rohirrim. Shanks probably trying to go for the creep now. He does not have War Chan though, but he can still probably creep this pretty easily with three battalions. Yeah, not gonna be saved actually. The Rohirrim are not in time. And yeah, gonna sneak those guys over there. Let these guys focus the lair down. We'll be able to get it no problemo. And, uh, uh oh, and these guys, I believe, auto engaged probably the wargs. Yeah, he did not want to do that. They went for those wargs. Trying to go after Mary, though. The Berserker is getting hit quite hard, though. Lumber mill workers going down. He's trying to go for the Berserker, but not going to be enough. Maybe he will get him down. Yes, he will. He's going to level up as well. Level two now, but might go down here in the process. Or he might start micro in a bit. Oh, level three now. But he might. Yeah, he's going to go down there. Finally, in the end, this is going to be crept. In the meantime, Rohirrim's also creeping the map, taking back his farms as well. And also over here, going to be able to take that down pretty easily. In the meantime, we do have more farms going up. No heroes just yet. And yeah, this is going to be creeping the map. Potentially saving up for a hero after he does creep and take that treasure. Lumber mills are going to be exposed now. Uruk Pikeman... Can be on the way now. Level 2. Yeah, they're over here. Going to be creeping in the meantime. Another one up here at the top side. Going to be trying to defend this top side. Oh, he's going to capture that farm though. Going to buy himself quite a bit of time in that case. Will he cancel it? Will he let it finish? Going to let it finish though. Going to buy a lot of time for himself in that case. And back over here. Oh, the Rohirrim. We'll see the pikemen though. Oh, going to be rocking right into them, though. Going to lose quite a few of them. Not going to be able to contest it in this case. But took that farm, though. Very nice there. Going to be able to buy a ton of time once more with that. Peasants are coming now to deal the pikemen in the meantime. And over here as well. So very nice by Dark Knight here. Getting out peasants, contesting these pikemen. Will be able to deal a decent amount of damage there. Potentially. All right, peasants chilling a bit. 
Another hit him cleaning up the top side of the map. And no lurch just yet. Some Zerkers on the way for Isengard. These guys are going to chill here. The peasants are not moving on in yet. Peasant Rohirrim. Force over at the top side. It will be able to potentially jump on top of those pikemen. The Rohirrim can deal with the berserkers though, however. Ooh, going to be trampling them down. Not going to finish them off just yet, though. They are a little bit tanky. But we'll focus fire them. Ooh, the pikemen though are still there. Got to be a little bit careful there. Another battalion of pikes though. But they will be able to not get anything done here. The peasants are level 2 now. Oh, going to be jumping on top of that. The mill has fallen. That is what he wanted there. The top one will fall as well. Even more peasants here at the top side. Peasants swarming on in now. Going to be able to take down so many mills now. And Shanks is kind of stuck in his little corner now at his base. Has no map control at the moment. Rohan has full map domination at the moment. Even at the top side, even taking down this mill very quickly. And over here, King Theoden going to be built. Lurtz is out on the field, however. That's going to be so beneficial here against any heroes with the cripple. Oh, losing a few units there, but should be more than okay. Lurtz can deal with the peasants, though, pretty nicely now. In that case, we do have Pike still here protecting. He's going to try to go for it once more. He's going to try to starve him out. But Shanks on top of it, not going to let him do that once again. Lurtz is picking away at them, though, slowly, bit by bit. Theoden is here, but he has to be very weary of that Lurtz now. We do have that Elven Summit now going to be used here offensively against the Pikes. We'll be able to deal with them and prevent the farm from going down. In the meantime, we do have Industry War Chant. And uh, two power points in the bank for Isengard. Elven War is going to be quite nice here, though. We'll be able to pick away at some pikemen. Now, Warchant going to be used, however. That's going to be able to make them quite tanky now. Lurts. Ooh, going to get the cripple off on Thad, and That is huge there for Isengard. He's going to go on top of him as well with the Uruk pikemen. We'll be able to finish them off with the Warchant quite easily. And losing King Thad and just like that. That has to be a big loss there. And oof. That is going to be tough to... I mean, he really wants to level that Thadon up. I mean, the Theta didn't get to do anything at all. Didn't even get any levels there. And very nice cleanup here by Shanks. Going to be able to take down even more units. And he is buffed up, ready to rec reclaim the map control. Already taking the top side. Forged Blades, though, and Heavy Armor. And Banners actually researched for this battalion. But walking right into the Pikes, that's not what you want to have happen there. Oh, ho, ho, losing that. That is huge there. Not paying attention there. That is a fully upgraded battalion there. That's got to hurt. That is a ton of money invested into that battalion. And you do not want to lose Rohirrims. They are so expensive. And you do not want to rebuild them. They are so freaking expensive. And you also want to have them leveled up as well. But they will be cleaning up the bottom side, however. He does have some nice upgrades, though, on all of them so far. Does he have Horse Shield? Not yet. Gonna be fighting the pikemen, it seems like the Zerker at least gonna go down here. Thaden is here giving some nice leadership. He could maybe go for those, but not gonna go for them yet. They are quite wounded. I'm gonna be uh, attacking the farm for now. What do we have here? Lurch is kind of walking around trying to find some stuff. He's gonna find these Rohirrim. The pikemen are gonna be fighting them though. Mm. Uh, I think the pikemen are gonna win this out, right? Or it's going to be close. Ooh, going to get out of there. Yeah. Going to be fine there with the Lurt's help there. No problem at all. Pikes in position at the base. Getting upgrades now. Heavy armor on those Urukai. Devastation was used. So going for that early Devastation. Instead of going for the juicier power points. Like Rain or Lumber Mill. Or Land. So that's interesting there. Trying to go for that more economical opener, I, I assume. Because he's kind of... He doesn't have too much eco right now. He's getting very harassed a lot. So that Devastation is going to be quite nice to have. To try to get some nice, fast resources. Uh oh the Lurz, though, is exposed now. He is a little bit oh, out of position now. He might go down here. The Forged Blades are going to definitely take him out here. And... Ooh, he's going to go down. Potentially Theoden is here in the mix too. He's going to let him get the last hit. Yes, he is level 3 Theoden just like that. 
from that one lurch. That could have been a huge mistake there from Isengard. That is almost a level 4 King Theoden. One more level, a little bit more. He's going to have Glorious Charge unlocked. And that could definitely change the tide of battle here. And once again, Dark Knight taking full control of the entire map once again. Has everything except for this mill here. Shanks is protecting this with his life. Three pikemen battalions here protecting him. But he did lose all of his lumber mill workers in the process. And back at home, he's just kind of trying to upgrade now. He did get the upgrades from that armory. And he also got Lurts back in action. Wow, that Lurts came out very quickly, actually. He just gone. He just went down and he's now out. Oh, going to have the Elven summon again. Here comes the War Chant, though, once again to try to counter them. Uh-oh, Theoden might be in trouble, though. Lurts try to go for him, but not going to be able to get him just yet. But now, now might be... No, not quite. He's going to fall back from those Elven archers. The leadership from Theoden when, uh, proving quite nice right now, giving everything super leadership. Oh, no. He's going to get crippled once again, but he's almost level 4. Is he going to get there in time? That will hit him. Cannot do too much. Oh, he just... Ugh, he just went down before getting level 4. Once again, what a nice play there by that Lurtz, by that Cripple, taking him down before getting that level 4. That very, very important level 4. And that's definitely going to buy a lot of time for Shanks now. And these Rohirrim are going to jump on top of the barracks. They might get it, but at what cost? They might go down here. He might lose an entire battalion because of this. Yeah, he will lose a battalion. Yes, he will. So, I don't know if that's even worth it. But he did get the Uruk Pit, losing a highly leveled battalion there. But he is going to invest into Rohirrim archers now. So, maybe that was kind of worth it for him. He's trying to throw away his uh, Rohirrims, maybe. And going into a, a better tech switch here from these uh, yeah, Rohirrim archers now. So, he's kind of spamming them now. Fire arrows, banner carrier as well. Theoden is back out. One more EXP and he's going to be level 4. And that could definitely be very nice for him. Sodomon is not yet out on the field. We do have the Elven Wood. And for Isengard, 4 power points in the bank. He has quite a lot of money though. Probably because of this devastation that was just used a second ago. So that's coming in quite clutch for Isengard in that case. But a nice little outpost here for Rohan. Double well statue. I mean, double statue well. And no additional heroes. He seems like he does not like Aomer for whatever reason. That is very odd to not play with Aomer. Aomer is so good. He gives leadership and he gives money per thing defeated. Or per enemy unit defeated. So, I don't know. Playing without the, uh, Aomer in these matchups... Mm, I don't know. Long term, it's not going to go too well because he's not going to have enough eco to replenish himself. And not having that extra damage leadership is definitely going to hurt him because what does Thaden actually give? Thaden gives 30% um, damage but 50% armor and I believe Ammer gives like 50 or 60% extra damage. So yeah, he is pretty important here with horse archers. That is for certain. So I'm not sure how that's going to play out but... Isengard definitely has a big army now assembled, but he's still backed up in his little base with one lumber mill, by the way. That is all he has on the field. Not even having this one at the top side. And just kind of kind of using industry, using that devastation throughout this whole entire game. That is how he's going to get that ego, and that's how he's going to build up this huge army as well. So looking very scary now. Rohan... Also getting up a quite a nice army now. Fire arrows. Some Aruhiram Theoden. Is level 4, is he? Yeah, he just got level 4 as well. So he has glorious charge now. He could use that. But, hmm. He's not going to use it just yet. Going to fall back for now. No additional heroes at the moment. He's just kind of investing all of his money into... Rohan archers and uh, fire arrows and all that stuff. Oh, look at this outpost here at the bottom. Triple farm. That's going to provide some nice eco boost here. But look at this Isengard army. That is a huge freaking army already. Fully upgraded as well. Fire arrows, force blades, heavy armor. Lurts is here. Level 3. Also getting quite nice levels. Level 5 needed for that leadership. And looks like they're going to take a fight here. 
quite a big fight here. He's going to use, yeah, he's going to use Glorious Charge now and going to try to trample him, but I don't know if that's going to work too well. Maybe it will a little bit, using that Elven Wood there to give himself some nice uh, defense. But Theoden, once again, going to be crippled down. He does not, uh, I mean, he can't take a break. He just keeps getting crippled. and He's going to get taken out too. Elven Warrior is going to be summoned as well. Going to try to focus down Lurts, it seems like. And they might trade their heroes here. They didn't go down. Lurts is getting very close to going down as well. But going to be reacting to it. Going to move him out of here. And he's retreating now. And he should be able to live. Ooh. Very nice there. So that whole entire Elven Warrior Battalion was pretty useless in that fight. Just attacking Lurts. And he did get out of there without going down. So that's quite huge for Isengard. Rohan also didn't lose too much here. He didn't lose any of his archers at least, but they had him going down again, so he has to wait for that. Maybe that's a good thing though, because once Thaden does come back on the battlefield, he's going to have Glorious Charge up again, so maybe that is actually good for him. But he's going to take out that mill, and look at this, Isengard has nothing on the map. Nothing at all. Everything belongs to Rohan. At the moment. Any heroes? No, no Aemir yet. Wow, that is interesting. Aemir is just so good. Saruman is out on the field. That is huge already. Isengard is fully fleshed out. He is so strong right now. 300 command points out of 500. Has still some eco. Rohan is spending every penny, it seems like. Getting three power points in the bank. And also trying to get down some of these level 3 furnaces. One will go down. Some towers will also go down. So being quite annoying. Lurch is still very low though. Trying to heal on up. Sodom is going to be very beneficial here. In this engagement. Five power points uh, collected for Isengard now. Almost six. And might be looking for another fight here with these armies. I mean these are both massive armies. Oh Sodom on. Oh. Ho ho boom. Nice fireball there. Lurt's not getting anything yet. I'm not gonna use this cripple. Is uh Thaden is around here somewhere, right? Or is he? I don't know. Hard to tell. It's hard to see in here. He's camouflaged. Yeah, he is in here. There he is. He's level four. He has glorious charge, yeah. He is ready to go for that. Maybe he's gonna commit to a fight soon. But Isengard is healing on up, trying to repair his combos, trying to replenish them as best as he can. And he has a big army now. We do have Edagorn on the field. No Anderil, though. Hasn't picked that up. He could go for Anderil. He has enough. Three power points in the bank. Um, Interesting. He, and, I mean, I don't know. He's not going for it, though. Anderil is definitely worth it for Edagorn. It makes him so much stronger. Freezing rain. However, for Isengard, that is going to be so huge here. He's going to be able to win a fight very easily now with that heavy rain. That heavy rain cancels all leadership bonuses. And that means Theoden, these statues are going to be nothing but useless. All right, there we go. No Andadal sword still, actually. What the heck is that? He is saving up for something. Glorious charge going to be used here. But what can he do against the heavy rain? Against the freezing rain, you cannot do anything any longer. You have no leadership. Your units are dealing basically no damage anymore. Oh, fireball there, but kind of missing. Used on one unit there. Oh, Saruman, I believe, missing that there as well. Not going to be able to capture. Now he's going to cancel it, actually. Not going to use it. Right at the last second. But I believe Rohan will have to be forced to leave this base. He cannot defend it any longer. The heavy rain... It's a little bit too much now. Anderil, what the heck? Anderil's sword still not picked up for Edagorn. He's so slow now. He needs the Anderil sword for uh, movement speed. And now he's going to go down in that case. That is a huge <clears throat> misplay there. Not picking up Anderil's sword. He is so slow. He is so squishy now as well. He's going to go down in a nanosecond. And there he goes. Going to be eliminated. And yeah, Isengard pushing on in now. Stabilizing so well. Has a quite a big army actually back at base as well. Just in case he goes for an attack. And now he will be able to capture this outpost for himself. He has a lot of resources in the bank. 
full pop cap as well, 500 supply basically. Rohan also full pop cap. Uh, pretty much Legolas out on the battlefield right now. But he is definitely trying to save up his power points. Maybe he just wants to go right away for that army of the dead as fast as possible. Doesn't want to waste any time going for Andal's sword. Maybe that is his play. Oh, boom! That is a huge Sodomon fireball once again. Sodomon proving so worth it here. Elvin, what are you going to be using here? We're going to be covered once again right away. So not much he can do once more. He always uses the land first, it seems like. And, I mean, he's trying to get a cheeky trample off before the land is going to be used. But did not work out that time around. Elven Warrior is going to be summoned here. Legolas, though, healed up. Just barely saving him. And, yeah, these guys are still going to be recuperating back at home. And Isengard can still push on through. He still has that Freezing Rain active, I believe. And also conserving his battalion there. Microing it back. Doesn't want to lose that. Lurtz is level 5, right? Yeah. That's quite huge. Uh, with that leadership, 60% damage is quite huge indeed. Alright, Legolas. Oh, ho, ho, nice hog strike there. There, then once again, going to be crippled down. Going to be focus fired. That means no more leadership here. And boom, there he goes. Pop goes the weasel, but Isengard's army is also evaporating in the meantime. I'm going to lose that heavy, heavily leveled battalion too. Oof. Uh-oh, Legolas. Got to be careful there. He does have leadership as well for the elven warriors only though. That only applies to elven warriors. All right. These guys are going to try to take out that Lumber Mill once again. And what do we have? Yeah, Cloud Break was used there. So he's going to be saving up for that army of the dead now. Isengard though, 11 power points in the bank. Also going to be saving up for that Balrog summon now. He's going to be getting close. Definitely. Sodomon is back out on the battlefield now. Level 7 almost needs level 8 for the healing. And he's going to be leveling up his troops quite nicely in the meantime. We have Edegorn back, but no Anderil Sword still, so... Mm, Edegorn without Anderil Sword is pretty useless. I mean, he still has leadership, so maybe not super useless, but... He is definitely not as tanky or not as fast without it. And doesn't deal uh, damage either as much, so he doesn't... <laughs> Anderil Sword is so good on him. But look at this double prong attack from Rohan attacking from two sides at once. King Thanon back into play with the glorious charge and actually getting some damage now done. What a play here by Rohan by Dark Knight splitting up his forces here. Edegorn might go down though. He is still weak. But he got some damage done there. Got two buildings. Got some of these towers down. But is it going to be enough though? Is that the question? Was it enough? to hurt Isengard. Mm, probably not, because Isengard still has quite a bit of resources here. He's getting 15 power points now. Very close to Balrog. Five more needed for that. And um, four more needed for uh, Army of the Dead, though, for Rohan. So maybe that's what he's fishing for. But boom, once again, only getting about two or three there. Not too bad. It is not time for me to leave Middle Earth. It is that time for me to leave Middle-earth. Legolas back in action. Looks like he went down there at some point. No armor still. So maybe... Maybe that is actually... Hmm. Maybe that is going to be the downfall of Dark Knight. Not getting armor this game. Armor. Ho oh, ho. Armor is so good. He's so underrated. He is so needed here. Because he's going to give so much damage boost to these archers these freaking rohan archers oh freezing rain was activated once again not gonna be able to uh forfeit the base once again yeah he's gonna sell everything he knows that freezing rain's gonna deny him that base very easily not gonna fight for him and he knows he can't win that i mean sodomon is here lurts is here they could definitely easily cripple down everything he has he's trying to go for another attack here at the bottom side but shakes is prepared has half of his army here to defend himself even getting a Siege Works over here at his base. Um, yeah, 17 power points. Uh, three away from the Balrog. And uh, seven power points for Rohan. Three away from Army of the Dead. 
So both are very close neck and neck here. Adagorn is still in action. Oh, going to be able to do a double prong attack once again. He's going to uh, force the Isengard player back to defend himself, however. The siege works going down in the process. And actually, a few buildings now going down for Isengard, losing about half of his base already. And look at this. He's going to definitely lose a lot here at his main base. And once again, I mean, he still has this, though. He got that outpost in the meantime. So he's going to be fine. But, um... Uh-oh, Edogorn. Edogorn, what are you doing? You're gonna go down so quickly. You're gonna go right into the whole entire enemy force there. Uh, Lurt's already using Cripple. Oh, ho, ho. That was a huge fireball there. On top of that whole entire army. They had in level 5. And looks like Isengard is stabilizing. Losing quite a bit, though. The Balrog summon has been achieved, however... What about Army of the Dead? He is so close to Army of the Dead. If only he had it here, he could have used it here and saved his base. Oh, he is just so close to it. Unfortunately, not getting it in time. If he had that in time, he could have actually dealt with the Balrog summon. And he would be looking in a pretty good spot right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, Isengard is moving out across the battlefield. But he might lose his whole entire base now. In the process, he will have enough here potentially. But Isengard is smelling blood in the water. He's going to go for the last outpost. If he can take down this main base and take out this outpost, it's going to be GG. Well played. That is what Shanks is looking for. He's looking to end the game right now with the Balrog summon and that outpost. Will he do it? It's going to be very close though. Is it going to be enough? Yeah, the Balrog's going to be able to take it down. The base is gone. He's trying to rebuild the outpost in the meantime. This is the only base he has left. Sodomon using the fireball and boom, arming the dead. Holy crap. What just happened in this game? Wow, what a fantastic finale there. Holy moly. Did you guys see that the Balrog took out the base and then Sodomon finished off the last remaining outpost? Wow. Just before the army of the dead was used. What a marvelous game there. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. Actually, this series was actually very close. It was actually a 5-4 victory for Shanks in the end. But the games I was showing are the best ones. The games that went into the late game. The other ones worked rather quick and maybe like under 10 minutes. So these were the best of the games. And I hope you guys enjoyed this series. This was a blast to cast. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, peace out and stay safe.